following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. A very good evening and thank you for joining with us on Business Best. This is a platform where we showcase the best in the business. We will be introducing to you people who have excelled in their particular field in order to showcase the latest developments in their respective industry. So today on the show we have a business or a cafe I would say that is actually a space that promotes healthy and sustainable living. This gastronomical innovation is mainly going towards the fancy side of interior designing and with a very subtle but yet fascinating menu. It's my pleasure to invite Shana Zandenier who is the founder and director of Cafe Kumbuk. Shana, thank you very much for joining with us on Business Best today. Thank you, Shanali. Thanks for having me. Unfortunately, we have to join via Zoom because of the safety precautions we have to take uh, because of the COVID pandemic. So, Shana, uh, my first question for you. Uh, Cafe Kumbuk and Plus 94 is known to be the mother-daughter powerhouse. And so, how did this come to play? Uh, so, I studied advertising um, back in London. Um, I finished my university degree and I came here uh, to Sri Lanka. I moved back. And at that time, um, there was a space in the market, I think, for, for something like our concept. And um, it was shortly after returning back to Sri Lanka that my mom and I decided that we were going to set up uh, Cafe Kumbuk. And uh, that's been running now for around five years. Plus 94 um, actually closed earlier this year, but uh, that was open for about two years. And that had opened just a couple of years after Kumbuk started. Oh, how did you all get the name of being the mother and daughter powerhouse, actually? Why did you want to start the business with your mom? <laughs> um, I mean, she's the person that knows me best and we work well together. Um, she's uh, amazing at cooking and she's got a great, um, a great sort of uh, intuition when it comes to food. Um, and I have also the marketing background and expertise, so together I think we made quite a good uh, duo. Great. So, if I'm not uh, wrong, you were born in Australia and brought up in England. So, what made you want to start up something here in Sri Lanka? Um, I've always had a strong love for Sri Lanka and I've always come back here um, on holidays, even throughout university and when I was, um, you know, living in the UK. Um, and so, my parents have always tried to, to make sure that I always have a strong connection with the island. Um, and so it was kind of a natural progression for me that I wanted to uh, move back here. Also, of course, the weather is so much better. So I wanted to uh, be, you know, in the tropics uh, after, after being in the UK for so long. Okay. So according to my knowledge, you said there was Cafe Kung Book and another restaurant ca called uh, Plus 94. Why did you want to decide That's another restaurant in another name? Why not another branch of Cafe Kung Book itself? Uh, so Plus 94 was actually um, a business that we started in partnership with Soul Coffee. So it had to be, I mean, we decided that it was going to be under a different name, but also because we wanted to di diversify our brands. And so we wanted to come up with something a little different, uh, a slightly different concept, different uh, focus in terms of food and drink. Um, and uh, Plus 94 just seemed like a really good uh, way to uh, encompass all of that. And also the, the uh, theme there was locally sourced everything. So um, as it is at Cafe Kumbu, but it was uh, more sort of centered around locally sourced coffee. Um, and that's why we came up with the name Plus 94, which is obviously the, uh, the country code, uh, the telephone number. Okay, Shana. So you have been exposed to two different environments, like in England, in Australia, as well as Sri Lanka. Where would you say is the easiest for you to start up business? I think Sri Lanka for sure. I mean, I, I definitely felt it was the right decision coming back here. I think for any business owner, um, especially if you know the language or you know enough to get by, then I think Sri Lanka is a fantastic place uh, to set up a business. Um, obviously, the, the investment in the UK or Australia is a lot more when you're trying to set up a business. And so this was definitely uh, the right 
place to do that. But also because, uh, as I said before, there was a gap in the market for it. And I felt that at the time, there were not really any other cafes like that um, that had existed. So um, I think this was the perfect, perfect spot to do so. Also, Shana, I'm very curious to know what made you come up with the two names for the business, like Cafe Kumbuk and Plus49. What's the story behind the two names? Uh, so plus nine four, we I think we touched on it. It's uh, all about the country code and talking about uh, locally sourced, um, you know, produce. Cafe Kumbuk was because um, I actually I wish there was some grand story behind it, but really it was that I wanted to. I knew I wanted to name the cafes after something uh, innately Sri Lankan, and Kumbuk had such a good ring to it that um, we we decided that we were going to go with that name, and we tried to incorporate a little bit of the Kumbuk material and Kumbuk wood in some of the interior design, um, and so it kind of went hand in hand with each other. Okay. So again, coming back to your mother-daughter relationship of doing your business, would you say it was very easy to start up this business with your mom? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I think it's always uh, tough at points. Um, it can be quite difficult working with, uh, with family members. You know, you have to strike a good balance between uh, personal and work life. But I think my mom and I have a good synergy and we were able to work together very easily from the get-go. And I think that's one of the, um, you know, the reasons why we've been successful as well. Okay, and also Cafe Kumbuk is known for the menu and tropical dishes, ex exactly what you all have. So who comes up with this menu exactly? Um, it's a pretty collaborative effort. So my mum has a lot of ideas that she puts on the table and then um, I will look at uh, different um, different recipes and come up with, you know, things that inspire me and I'll, I'll bring that to the table and then our chef, um, who is who is fantastic at what he does? He also, um, you know, gives us some of his ideas. So together we we sort of uh, discuss and we taste and test a lot of different a lot of different dishes before we finally come with the with the final menu. Do you all set up the menu according to what people prefer, like traditional dishes or something completely different? So the menu is mostly, um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it has a lot of westernized dishes, but we do take a lot of um, inspiration from local flavors. And especially, you know, with the pandemic, we've had to change our approach slightly. Um, I would say before the pandemic, we were definitely known as more of a, a tourist hotspot where we had a lot of people from uh, abroad coming and visiting the cafe when they got to Sri Lanka. Um, since then, I think we've really built a great local fan base and there's a lot of um, a lot of local influence in our food now. So I would say it's a mix of both, but definitely leaning more towards the local palette now. Uh, when it comes to the interior designing of Cafe Kumbuk, uh, Shana, I believe you are the brains behind the designing and the colours and everything, the furniture also. So didn't, you occur, didn't it occur to you that you wanted to start an interior um, designing business instead of a cafe? <laughs> Actually, um, it's not me that, that did the interiors. I did the marketing and the social media design of it. But okay. um, uh, I have two very, very good uh, friends of mine. Uh, the initial place that we were in was Avisha Desire. And the second place was uh, one of my dear friends, Anika Fernando, and both of them have an amazing flair for interior design, and they were the ones who guided me. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'd be able to do the interior design uh, part of part of it. It's, it's quite a tough job, uh, but I enjoy doing the social media marketing, which is my one of my passions. All right. Okay. Also, Shana, uh, in the past four or three years, the dining scene in Colombo has changed significantly and Cafe Kumbuk was one of the first in the new wave of restaurants uh, whose owners care about creating a unique menu and pay attention to design and go the extra mile to work with the uh, local producers and invest in sustainable products. What were some of the challenges you faced at the very beginning? Was it stressful for you to start up? I think um, that's a good question. I think it's always stressful. I think um, there's never really a time where you leave stress at the doorstep. I think in the early days, 
we, um, you know, we were just going with the flow and trying to, I was particularly trying to learn as I, as I went along. Um, I think uh, staffing can always be a stressful thing in the hospitality industry um, anywhere in the world. Um, luckily, we've, we've managed to build a good team, um, a very strong team who, um, who we trust a lot. So um, that's been great, and that's really helped ease the pressure and stress off of us. But I think in general, you know, especially in this uh, post-pandemic world now, um, hospitality is extremely stressful and it's uh, probably more stressful now than it was before. Um, but I think it's taught us a lot um, in terms of how to deal with situations better. And uh, we're looking forward to the future. Okay. Let's go into a short commercial break. We are in conversation with the CEO of uh, Cafe Kumbuk. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to Business Best and we are in discussion with the founder and CEO of Cafe Kumbuk. Shana, so tell me what was the inspiration behind uh, starting up Cafe Kumbuk? The designing, the menu, what was the inspiration behind it? Uh, so we want to reflect Sri Lankan culture as much as possible in the space that we created. Um, I think the main inspiration was trying to create a safe space in the city, um, a place where people could come and enjoy, uh, you know, local and healthy food. Uh, we do try to uh, use as much local produce as possible, and uh, we do uh, have uh, an environmental aspect as well, where we where we have really tried to cut out use of uh, single use plastics, especially in our takeaway uh, packaging. Um, so I think all in all, it's uh, it's sort of like a healthy um, and casual uh, dining experience that we try to that we try to come up with. Okay, and of course, uh, Cafe Kumbuk is something out of the box when compared to the usual and basic restaurants we have here. Was it easy moving away from the norm, and how was the response you received from the customers? Were there any criticisms that you received? Um, I think you're always going to face uh, criticisms or more than that, you know, uh, people who appreciate your work and people who don't, and that's part and parcel of, of anything that we put out into the world. Um, but it was definitely um, a passion project that, that started all of this and something that, um, you know, I knew very, very deeply what the ethos was for this cafe. And I think as long as I've always been uh, true to myself whilst going through this journey, um, I think it's been well received. And I, I think that's my advice for anyone who's starting a business is that it should always be true to you and uh, authentic as possible. Uh, do you think moving out from the norm was a good idea for you? And how did you uh, accept it in the first place? How did you make up your mind to do so? Uh, I think, like I said, it was something that I always had in my mind. It, to me, it didn't seem out of the box or it didn't seem, you know, uh, against the norm or anything like that. To me, it was just this idea that I had come up with. Um, and it was uh, it was something that I'm really glad that I, I put out there in the first place. I've had a lot of help with my family and friends supporting me through the journey. Um, but I think in general, it's just, it, it was it was definitely a new idea, but at the time it didn't seem new to me. It was just you know because coming from the UK and uh, even having uh, you know been in Australia as well, uh, these kinds of cafes and coffee shops are well known around the world. So it's not necessarily a new concept, but perhaps just new to uh, new to Colombo at the time. Uh, how did you deal with the criticism or the bad comments that you received for the restaurant? How did you overcome that hurdle? That has been a true learning process. Um, it takes a long time to get used to uh, dealing with uh, bad comments and criticism. Uh, but I think we have to take every single one as a learning experience. Um, and that's something that I've grown into doing over time, uh, especially when you put out something into the world, you, uh, you know, it's often, it's often hard to deal with that kind of uh, criticism when it comes your way. Um, but if we don't get it, we're not able to grow as a, as a business and as a restaurant. So it's really important that we take that with, um, you know, with good 
energy and feedback. Right. So how was the business affected with uh, the COVID pandemic? The hospitality industry was affected the most, I presume, and provided that no gatherings were allowed and with lockdowns coming into place, how did you ta tackle this situation? I think we're very much still trying to tackle it. I think things have become yeah. a lot more organized since uh, the first lockdown that we had. Um, it's been a, you know, it's been a very stressful time for a lot of people in the hospitality industry. I have a lot of Definitely. friends that are um, in in the industry, and they often, you know, talk to me about. Um, we we often talk to each other about how difficult things are. But I think we have to be fortunate that you know we we have been able to run in some shape or form where we've switched to more a delivery based business now, um, as I have a lot of restaurants. Um, but really, at the heart of it all is uh, we we want people to be safe. We we really want our community to be as safe as possible. And so, if that means that we have to, you know, limit uh, the dining capacity, or if it means that we have to put more health and safety measures into place, we've got to do that for the betterment of uh, you know of the society and of our country yes. as well. Okay, Shana. Then I want to ask you something about work-life balance. Uh, are you handling the situation okay at the moment or are you struggling to do so? Is it easy <laughs> for you to handle a restaurant? I'll be very honest, it's, uh, it's tough. I think there are days, there are good days and there are bad days. There are days where the stress of the situation would get to me quite a bit, but it's really important to have a good support network around you and people that can, um, you know, feed you uh, good good energy and, and positive, uh, you know, positive thinking and help you uh, on the way. Um, I think for everyone in this situation, I think COVID uh, doesn't discriminate. It's been uh, a very difficult time for uh, people in business, people not in business, you know, it's just, it, it's been quite a, um, a difficult period in time, but I know that it will make everyone stronger at the end of it. And uh, as my final question, Shana, what is your future expansion plan? What's your next step with the cafe? Um, I think if you had asked me pre-pandemic, I would have given you a different answer, but post-pandemic, we're not looking at um, you know, this, this situation has forced us to kind of take it day by day and not think too far ahead into the future. Right now, my uh, my main aim is to just keep Cafe Kumbuk alive and kicking and um, it's doing well, touch wood. So we want to continue that uh, in the future. We don't have any major plans to expand right now. And also just to enjoy what we're doing, because if we're not enjoying it, then uh, then, you know, I don't see the point. Uh, provided that if we didn't have this COVID pandemic situation, do you think you'll be able to open up Cafe Kumbuk Island wide or do you stick to expand <laughs> in Colombo itself? I would have loved to, I mean, that, that would be a great dream for sure. But um, from being in this experience of running a restaurant, I've also realized that um, you, you shouldn't expand too fast and it's good to take your time and, and really um, go slow with all of this. So I think um, even, even pre-pandemic, we may not have expanded island-wide as such, but maybe another one down south would have been ideal. Okay, Shana. Well, that's all the time we have on the show. Uh, thank you very much for joining with us on Business Best and I wish you all the very best with your future expansions of Cafe Kumbuk. Thank you, Shanali. Thanks for having me. Well, that is it from us on Business Best. Stay tuned for the next program, The Blueprint, coming up next, where you can get some useful business tools. I'll be back again on Business Best next week. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Have a good weekend. <laughs>